Hi, Mr. Traeger here. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the mental health self-check. And the goal of today of this lesson, this podcast, is for us to learn and understand a little bit better of how to check into ourselves uh, each day uh, to see how we're doing and uh, if there's things that we need to change, attitudes we need to change, thought processes we need to change, uh, that we have the ability to do that. All right. So let's start off. There's three things we look at uh, each day, or we should be looking at each day, and one is self-esteem, one is self-image, and the other is self-control. Those are the three areas that we want to take a look at. So I'm sure you've heard of self-esteem before. We're going to define it. What self-esteem means is how you feel about yourself, hence the term self-esteem. Um, so that's what self-esteem is. You have control over how you feel about yourself. Nobody else does. I can't raise your self-esteem. Nobody else can raise your self-esteem but you. Now, we can provide opportunities for your self-esteem to raise, but if you're not buying into what's going on, your self-esteem isn't going to move. Um, I could give you compliments every day. I could um, tell you that you're a great student. I could tell you that you're a great basketball player. But if you don't believe what I'm saying, it's not going to affect your self-esteem at all. Um, so you are in charge of that. You are in charge of how you feel about who you are. Next up is what we call self-image. Now, self-image uh, is how you think about yourself, how you view yourself. Um, it's not just the reflection you see in the mirror. It's when you close your eyes and you think about who you are. That's what your self-image is. It's the picture of who you are. It's going to be a makeup of your physical health, but it's also going to be a makeup of your attitudes, your personalities, your, your successes, your failures, your insecurities, your, your talents. All those things are going to make up how you view yourself, and that's what your self-image is. And the last thing is what we call self-control or sense of control, and uh, people even call it a locus of control using the Latin word, meaning location of control. And what that question answers is, or what that what that question what the question is asked is, who's in control of me? And that's what this this idea of self control means. Now, with this idea of self control or sense of control, there's really two different schools of thoughts. Uh, we have what's called an external sense of control or external view, and the external view basically relies on the environment um, is in control of what I'm doing. Uh, my life, my successes, my failures is all based on the environment. Um, I don't have any control over anything. Um, it's based on luck. It's based on what other people do. It's based on what other people haven't done. Um, you know, some people are good in school just because they were born smart. Um, those kinds of things. That's kind of how people operate in what we say externally. All right, when they're focused on that, that that it's everybody else's fault. Um, why I'm the way I am. And then the other way of thinking is what we call internal sense of control. And what that means is, is that I control myself in the environment. Um, it's not up to luck. It's not up to um, where I was born or any of those kinds of things. It's up to what I choose to do. Um, I may have to work harder than somebody else because maybe I'm not as gifted um, in athletics. Maybe I'm not as gifted in academics. Um, all that means is I have to do some things differently. Uh, some people just, things come natural to them. Uh, they're good at math. It's just kind of a talent that they have. They're good in sports. It's just a talent they have. And some people just aren't born with that, but that doesn't mean that they can't be good in those things. It just means that they have to do something a little bit different. And that's what internal control is. They accept responsibility for what they do, uh, good and bad. Um, so if they succeed and do some, some things really well, they pass the test, they get good grades, they, um, they, they're a starter on the, the football team, well, it's because of the work that they put in. They worked hard. They lifted weights. They studied. They paid attention in class. That's why I'm doing as good as I, I am in those things. But that's not a true measure of internal control. It's easy to accept responsibility when good things have happened. What about when bad things happen? Um, so you get a D on a test. Um, you don't start on the football team. Um, you're bombing your math class. What do you say in those times? Do you say, well, the teacher's boring, or do you say uh, the coach is a jerk and, and he doesn't like me? That would all be external. Or do you say, you know what? I didn't put the time in the weight room over the summer, um, and that's one reason why I'm probably not starting. I didn't put my time in the classroom. I kept dozing off. I kept daydreaming. I didn't do my homework. I didn't study for the test. That's why I didn't do so good. It, it's, it doesn't have anything to do with anybody but me. I should have done some things different, and that would have put me in a better situation. And that's what internal is. And so the goal is is for us to move um, more from the external because that's that's more of a 
a humanistic nature that, that we're born with. I mean, if you ever have babysat for a little kid or you got younger brothers and sisters, you know, it's all about them and it's it's all about what's going on in the environment. But to to accept responsibility, that that's kind of show a little bit of maturity. And we have to grow into that. And so the idea is is to recognize when we're thinking externally and make a conscious choice to accept that responsibility and, and try to be more in that internal uh, sense of control. I'm going to see if my, my pen will work here. So the idea here is for us to spend a little bit more time in the internal. Now, how, does, how do these two things relate to uh, this idea of self-control, uh, self-image, and self-esteem? Well, really, <clears throat> the, the benefit of, of these three things, I guess one good thing to look at, is that they all have an impact on each other. All right? So take self-esteem, for example. Um, self-esteem, um, how I feel about myself. Um, if I if I feel positive about myself, if I'm looking at myself in positive ways, or or if I'm feeling positive about who I am, does that have an impact on how I view myself? Typically, people who have a high self-esteem also have a positive self-image. Or I could go the other direction and say, um, what if I I start to view myself in positive ways, and I start to you know uh, look at my strengths and and uh, you know focus on those, focus on the positive. Um, is that going to have an impact on how I feel about myself? And the answer is yeah. Most people who, who have a positive self-image also have a high self-esteem. They usually go hand in hand. So these two things basically have this, this cert, cycl, cyclical relationship with each other. I, I feel good about myself, so I see myself in a positive way. Because I see myself in a positive way, I feel good about who I am. Now that can also work in the negative. I have a low self-esteem and therefore I view myself negatively and because I view myself negatively I feel crappy about who I am. Because I feel crappy about who I am I don't see myself very positive and it's this slippery slope going in the opposite direction. Now to change that really you just gotta pick one or the other. Uh, whatever's easiest for you. I think a lot of people uh, the, the self-image is a little bit easier to deal with and say you know what I'm tired of viewing myself in a negative way. I'm going to start to view myself in a positive way. I'm making that conscious choice. And as a result of starting to look at myself in a positive way, naturally what that starts to do is it starts to help me feel better about who I am. Um, so that's kind of how these two things work together. And then if we go down here with this, this idea of, of self-control, who do you think down here is going to have a better chance of feeling good about themselves and feeling that like they have some control over um, how they feel or how they see themselves. It's going to be people who are operating that internal. Um, when we focus more on the internal sense of control, it's going to make it much easier for me to change the way that I view myself and therefore change how I feel about myself. So they're all interconnected and it all starts with, I believe, whether we're in the external, the external or the internal control mindset. Um, if I feel like I have control and, and my life is my responsibility and I'm going to own up to that, it's much easier for me to, um, to change how I view myself and how I feel about myself. And so the, the trick here is, is for us to uh, pay attention to these things. You know, each day you get up in the morning and you say, what kind of day am I going to have? What, do I, what am I choosing to focus on in my life? Um, and, and then that's going to set up the rest of my day in terms of how I view myself and how I feel about myself. And uh, the whole idea here is gaining some of that maturity, trying to operate in that internal as much as we can. There, I got rid of those things. Um, but um, I use this, this term called, uh, or this phrase of who drives your bus. Um, and what that means is, is the bus is, is your life, all right? And you've got a choice. You can either choose to take the driver's seat and drive that bus, or you can choose to let somebody else drive the bus. Now, the benefit of someone else driving your bus is that if something goes wrong with it, you can blame it on somebody else. If the driver goes the wrong way, if uh, they don't get there on time, if they uh, go a direction you don't want them to go, um, if they don't check the maintenance you know, on, on the bus, if they're not checking the tires, the oil, that kind of stuff, and something goes wrong with the bus, it's not your fault because somebody else was in charge of your bus. The problem is, is that whose bus is it? 
it's still your bus. And you're just choosing to allow someone else to be in control of that. Um, so there's the give and take. The benefit is, is I can sit back and say, hey, it's not my responsibility. It's not my fault when things go bad. But at the same time, it's still your responsibility. Uh, you're still responsible for that bus. Now, reversely, if you sit in the driver's seat of that bus and you're not on time, whose fault is it? It's your fault. And so you're more likely to take more ownership and make better decisions uh, because you're driving and the buck stops with you. And um, if you want to go a certain direction with that bus, that's up to you. Maybe, maybe you need to take a detour. Maybe you don't want to go down a certain road because it's too bumpy or maybe you know that there's a quicker way or more effective way for you to get to where you want to go. But ultimately, it's your responsibility and you're making decisions of where your bus goes, uh, good or bad. Um, but the chances are, if you're, if you're taking control of that bus, you're probably going to make better decisions than if you just let somebody else take control of your bus and uh, you just kind of are along for the ride. And so the idea here is take a hold of the driver's wheel and, uh, and take that internal control and uh, you determine where your life is going to go. So I put together this little example uh, to show you what I mean. So. All right, so I'm going to give you an example of what I'm talking about with uh, this whole idea of control and everything. So um, what we're going to do is my wife and I, we've got to go to the grocery store, so we're going to go to Woodman's. So there's Tammy, so we're going to the grocery store. So I'm just going to let her drive because it's, it's a lot easier. Ugh. So I know this isn't a, an actual bus like I talk about, but it's good enough. It's a van. Minivan. So there she is. Minivan life, right? I don't know what we got for tunage. Alright. Sorry, it's mom van. Alright. Two mile drive to Go to women's. Go ahead and turn up here. Turn left. Fine. Turn, turn left right here. Because we'll get turn right. Turn left. I don't. <laughs> turn left right. <laughs> well, I know now it's going to take us twice. All right. Turn left at this street because then we can back around. I turn left. I'm right there. It's right. It Stop. Make turn, sense. turn left. Right there. Okay. Right there. I'm driving. For Pete's sake. It's going to take us forever to get there. Just, would you just listen to me, woman? Oh. <laughs> all right, turn. All right, here. Turn right on this one. Turn right. Turn. Where are you going? The same way I go. <laughs> oh, boy. All right, turn around. I turn, around. turn around. Woodman's is the other way. We're like heading towards, I don't even know where we're headed towards. Turn, hey. no, go to the, go to the stoplight. Don't, ah, come on. Then you gotta stop. Go to the stoplight, then over you gotta there. stop, I don't wanna stop. Uh, I don't even know where we are. It's a shortcut. A shortcut. I just wanted to go to the grocery store. That's it. And now I'm in a neighborhood. My Parker pen, or whatever that is. Toggles. We are. I'm getting about as far away from Woodman's as you can get. Are, are we going to pick and save now? Right. On the west side. Sometimes there's sales. Oh, for my pig's sake. Oh. Where are you going? You told me to take the other No. What? No, not this way. The other way. No, go go straight, 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 that way, that way. Jeez. What if, what if I needed to be somewhere, like I needed to be home for something? Would that have mattered? <laughs> okay, there's my answer. <laughs> Is
Is this you, Rock? Yep. Oh my gosh. It's like I've been hijacked. It's like no matter what I say, it doesn't matter. It's my van, and I want to go to Woodman's. I just want to go home now. Just go straight. Just go straight. Oh, come on. Oh. What? Where are we? I need to pick something up. Oh, my gosh. I just want to go to the grocery store and come home. I didn't want to go halfway across the state. I have a grocery list. Oh, my gosh. Are we all done then? Yes. All right. Now, now where are we going? We're gonna go to Woodlands. Yeah, whatever. <sighs> all right, you know what? You know what? I changed. Pull over, pull over. <laughs> no, no, I don't trust you. Pull over, pull over, pull over. All right, I'm driving. Where? I'm driving my van <laughs> to go to Woodman's. If you turn right at the light, you could go over to the next street up and then have less stops. I don't want to go to the right. I'm going to go straight. We're about turning. I'm going straight to Wilkins. You wouldn't have to stop as much. <laughs> no. So we went down that way. Nope. I'm going to Woodman's the way I'm going to Woodman's. Bumpy road. Road's probably smoother. It probably is, but this is the road I want to take. <laughs> you decide to go to Woodman's, you can go your way. I am driving so to Woodman's my way. It's the way I want to go. Now, look, right here, Woodman's. Mm -hmm. See how easy that was? There's Woodman's. So now the point being is, if I wanted to get to Woodman's, the easiest way for me to get to Woodman's is to go the way that I want to. If I wanted to go my way, I have to drive. If I let someone else drive, they're not going to go the way I want to go, and then I'm at the mercy of whatever they want to do, letting them drive the bus. Now the advantage is, is that they get to not take the responsibility, but ultimately, I needed to get to Woodman's, and so therefore, it was still my responsibility to get here. If I let someone else drive my bus, I may not get here when I want to. So, drive your own bus. <clears throat> so there you have it. If you saw in the video, when I was driving my bus, I got to take the van where I wanted it to go. Because ultimately that was what my responsibility was, was to get to the store. When I took over the wheel, I got there the way I wanted to. I didn't have to argue. I didn't have to worry about what was going to happen. I didn't feel like a hostage to somebody else. Um, the benefit to Tammy driving was is that I could say that none of that was my fault, that she was going all over town and I didn't have any control. Um, you know, it was up to her wherever she went and it just wasn't my fault, but I let her drive. That's how it started out. I said, you go ahead and drive. And when I gave up that control, um, I also gave up the ability to be able to decide and determine exactly what was going to happen in my life. So take over the wheel. Um, if you don't like how you feel, change how you feel. If you don't like how you view yourself, start looking at yourself a little bit differently. Take a, hold of, take a hold of that wheel and you drive your bus and you take it to a place that you want it to go. So, drive your bus. Oh yeah, and don't forget to take your quiz on Kia.